Hello, it's Slutty Blue here and today we are going to create a very simple and cute card to send to the people you love. I am going to draw a penguin and use digital watercolors. But feel free to customize your cute character and use your favorite Procreate brushes. If you support me on Patreon, make sure to download the workbook and color palette. You'll find the link in the description below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe! so you don't miss any of my monthly videos and giveaways. Having said that, let's get started! So, this is the color palette I am going to use. A pretty limited color palette, which is perfect for beginners. And the brushes, only six, no big deal. One for getting a nice paper texture, one for sketching, also one for coloring, but a cool one because it is a dual color brush. Um, we'll talk about it later. And two more to add some extra watercolor touches. Okay, let's go to the next page and take the first step, which is to add a paper texture. So tap anywhere on the canvas and then choose the paper layer. Of course, you can do this on the layers menu, but this is a faster way. Pick a color you like. For me, it's going to be this violet. Then, choose a paper texture brush. This time I'll choose my dark recycled paper. So, without lifting the pencil, I am going to paint with it the entire canvas. Now, go to the contrast layer and apply the same texture to it. We are doing this to enhance the paper texture on the colored areas that we are going to have later on. Tap on the layer and then on Invert. Can you see that the texture now stands out more in the colored areas? But it looks a bit greenish, right? We'll fix that by going to Adjustments, Hue Saturation Brightness and just setting the saturation to None, the problem will be fixed. See? Next step, Sketching. Go to the Sketch layer. Pick blue or the color you usually use for sketching. And also, don't forget to change the brush. I'm going to use my focused detailer. If you have the workbook, you can simply trace my sketch or use it as a reference for drawing a different animal but with the same cute proportions. As you see, this is a very simple design, so I'm sure you'll be able to do this without a stencil. In any case, if you need tips on how to create cute characters, go check out my YouTube channel and Gamroad. I left some links for you in the video description. Okay. Once you have the sketch, grab your sketch, contrast and paper layers, drag them to the second page and release them just above the color layer. Now decrease the opacity of the sketch layer to about 10-15%. We need to see it, but not too much. We are going to move on to painting, so let's go to the color layer. Then pick the color you want to start with. And a brush as well. Since I am going to use a dual color brush, I'll have to choose two colors, primary and secondary. In my case, the secondary color will be always white. That will help us create more realistic watercolor washes. So we are going to be varying the primary color 
but the secondary will be always white. I'll pick the grey one because I am going to start painting the penguin's body. The edge will look different depending on the brush size. If you prefer it smoother, go and decrease the brush size. See? Um, let's choose something in between. By the way, I set it to exactly 6%, just in case you want to use the same size as me. Oh no, we lift the pencil and now there is a hard edge. Don't worry guys, we can easily fix this. Going over it repeatedly, we will add more water and soften the edge. Also, depending on the pressure we apply, we can keep those strong contours or smudge them. We'll smooth these later. If I apply low pressure, there is more water than pigment, see? But if I press harder, I'll get more pigment. I often vary the pressure continuously to achieve what I consider to be a more pleasant watercolor look. But, you know, play around and see what looks better to you. I also like to leave small gaps. What can I say? I like imperfections. Well, just in case you don't like imperfections, let's fix this. To blend these rough edges, just go over and over applying low pressure. Easy peasy. I would like this part a bit lighter. this part a bit more rounded. Let's paint the flipper. Let's make this part darker. The flipper needs to look darker as well. Yeah, let's darken the other one. More pressure, less pressure. I will probably make this darker later. Well, we'll see. The next color I'm going to use is black. And again, I am painting this by varying the pressure and leaving some gaps. Decrease the brush size to be able to paint the smallest areas. The texture looks good, but it is not dark enough, right? No problem, let's add more paint.
I am adding some extra water here. What else goes in black? Hmm, let's paint the letters. For the letters, I'll set the brush size to 13%. Letters done. Let's paint the heart now. Same process. Size two percent for painting in detail. As I said before, I like watercolors with imperfections, but if you prefer a more homogeneous look, keep a continuous pressure and don't leave gaps. You could also use a selection tool and a big brush for getting a perfect watercolor wash. I'll use this color as well for painting the cheeks. Some contrast is needed here. Let's pick black again for painting the eyes, beak and feet. We are almost done. We just need to paint some shadows so this illustration doesn't look flat. So grab your color, contrast and paper layers and move them to the next page. Now place the color one underneath the shadows. Go to the shadows layer. I'm going to show you a different method to paint without going out of the edges. Open the Layers panel again, go to the Color layer, then tap on the Selection tool, then Automatic. Tap, hold and drag your finger to the left until the selection threshold is set to zero. Tap on Invert to select the painted area. Finally, go to the Shadows layer and create a layer mask. This is the way we set boundaries. Have you noticed that some paint disappeared? Let's exit selection mode and talk about shadows. Make sure you are on the shadows layer, okay? The fastest way would be just to make sharp shadows like this one, but it looks too sharp for me, so I'm going to blend it a bit. Since the process is the same, I will speed this up. It 
If the paint goes beyond the edge, load your brush with some water and then pick it up with a dry brush. I mean, go over it applying low pressure. Okay, let's talk about the giveaway. I will select one winner each month among the people who leave a comment on this video, like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The winner will receive a brush bag or workbook of their choice from my Gumroad shop. So let me know in your comment which one would you like to win. I'll pin the comment with the winner chosen randomly around the first of every month, okay? Of course, if you have any questions or nice comments about the video, drop them there too. The trick for the shadows is to imagine where the light source is and just darken the opposite side. Okay, the shadows are done. Cast shadows also add a sense of volume, so let's create a new layer. And place it underneath the color layer. First, with light pressure, determine the area in shadow. And then apply more pressure for darkening the area that is closer to the penguin's body. Do the same with the letters. Good! It's time for the final touches. Choose black and go to the splotches set or the texture set if you are using other brushes. For example, I'm going to use my bloomer brush to make the edges uh, look darker. As if we had added water and the pigment had moved there. I am also going to use the random blotches. Um, just for that, for adding random blotches or blooms. We can use the selection tool, freehand mode, if we only want to add watercolor effects to a specific area. And this is done! Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to follow the rules to enter the giveaway and, well, see you in the next video, bye!